I had students come to me, Christian. Do you think that trading is gambling? And does God look at what we do as gambling? Well, the lot is in the hand of the Lord. So if you believe that and you ask of him to grace you with a blessing and he allows you to have it, does that sound like God saying, no, this is not something you shouldn't be doing? I don't think, and I'm going to say this statement, I'm going to get off this topic because I could go on this for a long time. I know there's people in here who don't want to hear this, but I want to touch on this because it can't not be discussed and that not be an issue because I know some of you are listening and thinking, okay, but this is something bad. My church members would frown on this. You know, uh, maybe we're trying to get a club together and, uh, you know, I'm learning from this guy now he's here or they're listening to this podcast or whatever it is I'm doing here and I'm cussing and I'm saying you should be profiting off of people dying in a war. And uh, it, it doesn't sound like something they would want to participate in. I'm not saying that's what we do. I'm saying that that's where sometimes, unfortunately, great opportunity is there. And here's what you can do with that. You can take that windfall victory and turn around and bless other people with it. That's all you got to do. If I profit and I see someone in need, I don't broadcast it and say, I go out here and I did this today. Give me my uh, attaboy publicly. I don't virtue signal for that crap. Okay. I have shared in years gone by that when I'm in a grocery store, I like to pick somebody out that wouldn't necessarily expect it. And I go behind them with my cart and then I tell the person, go ahead, I got you. Now, I'm not saying that to, to lose my reward for doing it. I'm not trying to sound better than the average person, but that's how I live my life. So I don't just go out here and try to make money off of incidents that people were victim of, you know, earthquakes and wars and you know, terrible things that took place, a currency collapse, you know, something that, you know, to that effect. That's going to cause reverberations in the marketplace. That's opportunity. And if I can profit from that, how I feel good about doing it is I go out and I'll find someone that's in need of something and I'll do something provide something for them, render a service to them. And that's it. No, no reward beyond that. Just feeling good doing it. That's how I coped with it because early on I had, I had that wrestling match, you know, am I really doing the right thing? Like, I'm, am I doing the right thing? And I look at it this way. There's a pa- there's a parable of the, the talents. Okay. And the one that was given the opportunity to multiply the talent, he went and buried it. He said, well, look at this guy. He's shrewd. <laughs> he, you know, if I lose this, he's going to be really upset with me. So I'm just going to go bury it. When he comes back, I'll get right back to him. And he was chastised because he did not at least put it in the bank so he can do what? Get interest on it. That's investing, folks. That's speculating. So I don't think that God has an issue with trading or speculating. He has an issue with money changers, clearly. <laughs> Fashioned a whip right out of a rope and drove them out. Turned over the tables, released all the doves. So if you're expecting that blue-eyed, loving, hippie Jesus to come back, I don't think that's what you're going to be getting. But again, <laughs> I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to preach. But there's so many things in that book that you could literally draw so many parallels into how you should live your life as a trader. And you don't have to be a Bible thumper. Okay. You don't, I don't go to a a church. I don't go to a religious building full of people. I don't have any issue with people that do that, but I don't do that. I don't participate in 